just want to go over with you your solid by prosthesis. The fact is you've chosen the best thing that we have available to us right now to restore uh, your teeth. Your teeth have either, um, are either non-restorable and you're replacing them with dental implants or you've had a denture for a while and you want to have um, something that supports and allows you to chew and smile with more confidence. So that's great. And I want to tell you a little bit about what this is all about so you can understand um, what this is. Number one, here it is, okay? And there's the prosthesis. We're gonna go over, I'm gonna take the prosthesis off in a second, but you can see the prosthesis is there. And um, it was, that's the lower, if it were the upper, it would look like this. Um, and you can see that, and I think you can see that pretty well. Uh, your palate is relatively free. For some people, there's more freedom than others. And it has to do with where your bone is, how much resorption or bone resorption that you've had. On the upper arch, usually your bone will resorb back and in. And depending upon how much resorption you have would determine where and how thick the prosthesis is, particularly in the area in the speaking space, which is uh, right here right here towards the front. Um, let's take this prosthesis off and you can see it uh, a little bit. And this is a solid piece of ceramic. And then what, what happens is in the laboratory, this solid piece of ceramic is actually in a block. And then there are um, little saws which actually uh, gradually sculpt this so that you have gums and teeth. And then in the laboratory, uh, the teeth are um, essentially colored, and so are the gums colored, and so that you have a natural appearance. It has a little bit of weight to it, you know? It, it is a little bit heavy, and certainly heavier than your natural teeth might be. What, what are you going to experience? Well, what's going to happen is that initially we'll take out the teeth, we'll put the implants in, we'll put in a temporary version of this in first. The temporary version is made out of plastic. It's uh, not as solid as a piece of ceramic, and therefore there needs to be more thickness to the plastic than there is to the ceramic appliance. You'll be wearing that, uh, that plastic appliance, which looks pretty good, um, for a period usually of two to four months, depending upon how, um, how dense your bone is. Uh, once we know that the implants have healed into the bone, then you'll have your permanent prosthesis made, the one that I just showed you. During the fabrication of the permanent prosthesis, we will actually do an entirely new try-in. In other words, we'll have teeth that are mounted in wax. We can move those teeth however we want. We can uh, change those teeth over and we can uh, design the smile exactly the way you want it before we go to the processing step. Once we get to the final design and you like it and we like it, then we go to the final processing step, which is um, the, solid, the solid ceramic. What are the difficulties the patients have? Well, number one, during the temporary phase, if you chew, and if you chew too hard, you could break the prosthesis. Actually, it's made out of plastic, and that can jeopardize your implants. And so therefore, we're very, very specific on what you can and what you can't do um, while you're in the temporary phase. Essentially, those teeth are made for smiling. A little bit of chewing, but it's really a restricted diet while you're in the temporary phase. Second thing is that people are sometimes disappointed in their temporary. And understand their first, your first temporary is our estimate as to where the teeth should be. Actually, uh, After all, your teeth have been damaged, and, and essentially what we're doing on, in the laboratory is to create what we think the teeth should look like, but that's by no means your final prosthesis. So it's an effective... <laughs> uh, looking prosthesis, it looks okay, but that is not going to be your final prosthesis. Your final prosthesis is going to be custom designed um, as, as, as we originally said. What about the final prosthesis? Well, the final prosthesis, when we design that, we do the custom design, you'll need to be able to clean underneath here. And there's uh, this is held in by four screws. So let me put it back on the model for a second. Okay, so this is screwed in place. Obviously, I'm not going to screw it in place right now because we're we're taking it off, but this is screwed in place. Um, you'll, there'll be a very small space, I mean a very, very small space, between the tissue, and your tissue, and the tissue representation of the model. Within that, we can get floss threaders, proxy brushes, things that we, you can do in order to be able to clean. It's important that you do clean. You know, the, the biggest cause of, of implant failure is 
plaque control or lack of plaque control. Bacteria can accumulate here and can cause damage to the bone surrounding the implant, just like it can do to bone around, around natural teeth. And therefore, um, your discipline in taking care of the, these uh, implants, which will involve about five to 10 minutes every single day, and getting cleanings on a regular basis as we prescribe uh, is what's going to be uh, the assurance that uh, you uh, keep these and you keep these, uh, these implants for a long period of time. Second thing uh, that people have to get used to is this, this, this prosthesis is thick. This is not natural teeth. You know, the natural teeth do not come in a block like this. And so therefore it takes a little bit of time for people to get used to, and it varies from, from person to person, to get used to actually speaking um, using this. You will be able to speak. Uh, I can tell you that I have veneers. Yeah, these are veneers here, and veneers is not this big block. Veneers was just uh, covering my teeth and changing the shape of the teeth a little bit, and it took me about six months to be able to speak normally again, and that was sound normally to me, and normal to me. Um, we're our own worst critics as far as speaking goes. We think that nobody can understand us, but in fact, everybody can. We're just getting used to it. Where do the lips go? Where do the tongues go? Where does the tongue go? How, 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 how do we maneuver? And so particularly in this area, which is the back, particularly in the upper teeth, let me move this so it's upper teeth, particularly in the back here, your tongue is going to have to get used to a new place to, to pronounce S's, to pronounce T's, um, even pr pronounce F sounds because these teeth, uh, these top teeth are going to be touching your lower lip. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. You can do it. It's fine. You can, you, you, you'll be able to, you'll be able to speak again. The other thing is chewing. You know, when you're chewing against natural teeth, and I know you've got damaged natural teeth, so you've got to go back in your memory. When you're chewing against natural teeth, there was some kind of a, a sense. The teeth are attached to ligaments, and so there's some kind of a feeling there. You can feel your teeth. Whereas this, this is a block on, on implants, and therefore you don't have that same proprioception, that same type of feeling. You'll get used to it, um, but it does take some getting used to and a little bit of training. Um, to, to get to get to get used to that. Um, what else can happen to this? This is a ceramic prosthesis, and uh, sometimes we enhance it with porcelain. That can chip from time to time, and there's some normal repair charges that occur. That that for most people that doesn't occur, but sometimes if you're particularly rough on your teeth, if your existing teeth are really worn out, then you chew harder. You've got strong muscles right here, and those muscles are going to are, are, are going to provide. Uh, provide force. Everything can be repaired. And it's, uh, the, the fees to repair are not are, are not that great, but sometimes when it does ship, um, that's as a result of, uh, of, of, of your function or perhaps over-function the teeth. That's sometimes why we're prescribing a night guard for you, so that at least at night when you're clenching your teeth, you're clenching your teeth against a plastic barrier in order to help dissipate uh, those forces. So that's pretty much it. That's the way this prosthesis works. It's a great boon to dentistry, great boon to patients. And uh, with these little uh, um, uh, instructions and, and precautions and things that you need to be aware of, um, you're going to have a, have a great experience. If you have any questions, just talk to one of our staff, talk to me, talk to one of the doctors, and we'll be able to answer them for you. Thank you. In this office, we've been able to accomplish control of periodontal disease using an item called the perioscope. Now, I want you to picture something. When we're trying to get periodontal disease under control, the key element is to get the root surfaces of the teeth clean. Yet, if you have a pocket of any greater than four millimeters, it's already dem been demonstrated that a hygienist cannot get the root clean. Let's take a look at what a camera can do, where a camera can go down into the pocket and how much calculus we can then see and see how much more effective our scaling and replaning can be with a perioscope. So if you take a look at this screen, you see that Amanda is treating a patient here and you're taking a look within the scope itself. You're seeing here the calculus. This is the calculus on the root surface. Something that Amanda can see, but something that she wouldn't feel. Now Amanda can go in and reach the calculus, and she'll take the scope off 
in a second. So reach the calculus, clean that calculus out, and then we'll be able to see the difference after she's treated the area. So you see now, Amanda is going in with an ultrasonic scaler, the same ultrasonic scaler that you would have used uh, by your hygienist in, in any office, but now she knows where to go because she's been able to see where the calculus is on the scope. Now as you see this same area in the root surface, now the calculus is gone. The root surface is clean and the patient will heal. I'm Dr. Lee Sheldon. Hi, I'm Dr. Lee Sheldon. I know you think about us as the Dental Implant Center where we do dental implants, do solid bite. But you know, it's a whole lot more than that. Um, the first thing that we concentrate on really is diagnosis is determine whether implants are the right thing for you or not. We're not one of those centers where all we do is take out teeth, put in dental implants, and put in teeth in the same day. Yes, we do that, and we do that on a regular basis. But you know, sometimes teeth can be saved, and teeth can be saved predictably, and if that can occur, that can be a lot better for you in the long run. And so when you're seeing us, it's the diagnosis first. It's thinking about the problem, determining what can be done, what we should do before then going to the next step, which might be dental implants or might be saving your teeth. It's important to me that I give you options, options that I think uh, will last for a long time for you so that you can choose which, which way you would like to go. One of the things that we can do to diagnose, which is really neat, is that we can measure the DNA of the bacteria in your mouth. In other words, yes, if you have periodontal disease, we can determine the bacteria that's there and determine the relationship between that bacteria and heart disease. You're seeing that on this chart right now. You're seeing a, a printout of bacteria. So just like you, know, you go to the physician and you have an infection, the physician will take a culture. We can do very much the same thing, not necessarily just seeing the bugs, but seeing the DNA of the bugs, uh, which is a lot more accurate. For our patients we can save teeth for, sometimes we'll be able to find out which antibiotic might be best for that patient in order to be able to help that um, patient do better and keep teeth um, for a long, long time. So yes, we're just as proud of our saving teeth as we are dental implants, and uh, here we concentrate on both. I'm Dr. Lee Sheldon.